Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing an Owl Crate unboxing. I can never remember like <clears throat> what month we're on, but I, I think this is February. I think Owl Crate's pretty much up to date. They were a little behind in February, which is why I didn't get it in February, but I believe this is the February box because obviously it's too early in the month for March and I'm pretty sure I got my January box because, oh yeah, January was okay. I think. I don't remember. I really, it's all, everything is starting to blur. Everything is starting to blur. So I believe this is February box. So we're going to check it out. It is like distended. It is, there is lots of things in here. It seems like, or at least like bigger items, but I'm excited about it. I'm always excited to unbox things. It is super fun. It's also weirdly heavy. I don't know why it's so heavy. Was this a spoiler? Did we know we were getting a blanket? Cause that's the first thing on top and would explain why it's so full. Okay, I dug through it because the spoiler sheets and stuff were uh, at the very bottom. So here is the Owl Crate artwork. I, I wish they would get another artist to do the artwork like, like they used to have, the really, really cool artwork. But yeah, this is just, I don't, I don't enjoy looking at the spoiler sheet anymore, but it does say February, 2023 magic and mischief i forgot this was like circus themed esque looking so i don't know unless i'm just making that up but for some reason i thought it was circus themed oh i'm pretty sure we just did a circus theme one. i don't know anyway let's look at the blanket apparently it's a blanket month because we literally just got one from unplugged book box for february as well so that's fun so this is the dark academia throw blanket i'm assuming this doesn't have any type of like Oh, it looks a little bit like a Libby Blake with this kind of like artwork here, kind of. Or Addie LaRue maybe, but Addie LaRue is not dark, dark academia. This time I will, I will film a uh, excerpt of showing the blanket. I, I realized after I published the Unplugged Book Box, I'm surprised someone didn't bring it up. That definitely is like something that people would be like, you idiot, you didn't do it. So I was supposed to film the blanket separately and I didn't <laughs> I didn't and I totally forgot about it I even left a space for it like in the video looking like an idiot where I'm like here's the thing and then it just switched to me talking again and I was like you idiot <laughs> but I'm also too lazy to like pull everything off and like re-add it in there that is no that is way too much work okay Ooh, I don't love that I hate frayed frayed things but maybe I can cut that off and it'll be okay I may have to retie that I may have to retie that okay knowledge is carnage you can't have it without sacrifice so there's the main thing you know what I'm probably not gonna put an extra thing in for this one just because it's not like an elaborate design this is pretty much it I feel like this is Atlas 6. Like it looks exactly like the cover. Yeah, That's a, it's a pretty simple design, so I'm not gonna actually add in a clip of it. <laughs> that way I don't forget this time. But, and it's not like huge. I love these blankets. They're good like feet blankets <laughs> or like hand warmer blankets. Just little things to, uh, to keep you warm if, if your house is freezing like mine is. Okay, next item. Kel's Letter Opener. Arnez Red London. So that's definitely a darker shade of magic. Alcrate exclusive. So this is going to be gonna be a sword replica, isn't it? <sighs> I hate sword replicas. Oh, so it's supposed to be on here. <laughs> it was supposed to be on here. Designed by Sayer illustration and design Kel's letter opener shades of magic trilogy yeah so a darker shade of magic okay you know what I love this this is a real letter opener and it's beautiful like this is definitely going to stay in the front of my house for when we get all of our junk mail and uh, I can open everything. This is so nice. And like I said, legit letter opener. As Oren's London. 
Oh, power and balance, balance and power. I was so confused because it looks like a C and then a P, how they, how they did the lettering. So love this. I love this. Man, I thought I was going to hate that. <laughs> Second I saw a letter opener, I was like, oh my God, another freaking sword replica. But no, legit letter opener. Maybe they saw people were like a little annoyed with other book boxes having uh, like not real letter openers that work. So they're like, let's do a real letter opener. Oh, this is definitely, yeah. I definitely remember getting January because the pin, I'm so excited to see what the second pin is because these are like the opening pins. Treasured Tomes, limited edition pin collection, the Crescent City series. I really need to start that. But now I'm reluctant because like some people hated the second book. And I feel like that's really weird for like a Sarah J Mass book. Wow. Uh, it's shiny. I think I like the first one better, the Jude and Cardin one. Lu Lunatheon, Relics and Artifacts. Oh, the inside is so cool. Gwyndian and Luna's Horn. Like I said, I haven't read the series, so I don't know what these are, but they look really, really cool, and they're obviously artifacts because this is some sort of artifact thing. That is so cool. Says Gwyndian, also known as the Star Sword. This ancient weapon was made from the metal of a fallen star. Luna's horn, wielded by Peleus, the first starborn prince during the first wars. This ancient relic was forged by the Fae in their homeworld before their arrival at in Midgard. Yeah, love it. I think it's so pretty. I'm so excited to start reading Crescent City. Okay, next is magnetic bookmarks. Ooh. I feel like LitJoy did a ton of magnetic bookmarks, so I'm curious to see what these look like. Ooh, these are nice. Okay. Magnetic bookmarks. Jorge Luis Burgess, Alice Hoffman, which is Practical Magic, and then Neil Gaiman. Everyone knows Neil Gaiman. So the Neil Gaiman says, a book is a dream you hold in your hands. The Alice Hoffman is books may well be the only true magic. And the one that I really can't say is I have always imagined that paradise will be a kind of library. A reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. The man who never reads lives only once. These are beautiful. I actually do like magnetic bookmarks as long as I normally put them over two or three pages or you can rip through your page if you're not careful. And they, they are heavy. So these are so pretty though. Those are really pretty. I'm really excited about that. I heard to the book already and I was like, wait a minute. I feel like we're missing something. We have a little journal, which is super pretty. Oh my gosh. And it's squishy. <laughs> it is squishy. Starless and sacred. Is this the starless? I feel like this. Oh, there is a key. Is this the starless C? Oh yeah, it's definitely starless C. You got the B right there and you got the keys. So I feel like this is the starless C. Another one that I've tried. I tried to read the Starless Sea and I was like interested, but the writing is really thick. So I ended up just putting it down because I wasn't in the mood. Starless and Sacred. And then We Are All Stardust and Stories. So this is definitely going to be the Starless Sea. Oh, oh, I like this even better. Okay, so it's a, it's a jacket. It's a jacket. So you can put any kind of notebook in here that fits. Okay, that makes me way happier because that means that once you're like done with this notebook, you're not gonna be done with this cover. Cause that's what I always get so upset about. Like I don't wanna use my pretty notebooks because I have, to, if I'm finished with them and there's nothing, no information I need in it anymore. Like if I'm planning videos or stuff in here, I will, I have to throw it out. I cannot hoard, I cannot be a hoarder. So this is fantastic. I love this idea. If I pull it out though, I'm never gonna get it back in. <laughs> So I'm not doing that. And the little notebook is specifically designed to bullet journal and it's got the key and the B on it. So I think that's so nice. I love that idea. And I'm trying to see if the ribbon is attached. Ah, the ribbon is attached to the actual like notebook, which kind of sucks. I wish the ribbon had been attached to the journal. That would have made more sense, but whatever, that's fine. I think that is really cool. I wonder if, is it supposed to, yeah, no, it's definitely detachable. So that is so cool. I love that. This is going to be 
yeah, I'm gonna see. I wonder how many of my notebooks this will fit on. I don't know. I may have to go try because <laughs> like I said, this feels really, really nice. Last item I believe is gonna be the book. Yep, last thing is the book. So no sprayed edges, which is kind of sad. I'm always sad when there's no sprayed edges, but I don't even know if I like the cover very much. <laughs> okay, uh, let me take the paper off or not the paper, but the plastic wrap. Okay, so here is the book. I think it's called Ravel. Ravel? Yeah, that's the only way I can say it. Ravel by Lissa Mia Smith. I don't know if I love this cover because I actually really like the original artwork. I feel like this is very muted compared to the original one. Like, I feel like it's still pretty, but it's not exactly my favorite type of artwork. And then we have the side. And then the back. I'm a re revel. We never fall. So we have foiling on the hardback, which is really pretty. It's got like a funkadelic feeling to it. Love is the curse, not magic. And then the back is love is its own sort of magic. Again, very funkadelic 70s almost vibe to it. And then we have some artwork on the inside, which is very pretty. I love that cityscape. That's really nice. And then the back is the same. Back's the same. And then we have, oh yay, okay, they bound in the author letter, which I love. Did they do this last month too? I don't remember if they did. And then the signed page, obviously. So that's really cool. I love when they bind in the letters, the author letters. And then we have some reversible art. Man, I was hoping I would like it, but I don't really like it either. Like, it's fine, but it's not something I would, like, go out of my way to turn around because it's such a pain in the butt to reverse dust jackets. So I'd only do it if I really, really loved it. And I don't love this as much as, it's fine. Like, it's fine. I don't like either, but I like what's already on the outside better. He's got like the bluest eyes. I wonder if that's obviously gonna be part of like the book. Okay, so that is all of the artwork. Let's talk about what the book is about. On the island of Charmont, magic flows like bootlegged champagne and fantasies can be bought for the price of a gemstone. Lux Rev... Revel? Revel? I don't know how to say that. Star for Family's fantastical show knows the splendor is just an illusion. With prohibition threatening their livelihoods, her family struggles to make a living, watering down champagne and patching holes in their sequin costumes. So when the son of Charmant's wealthiest family makes Lux an offer, all the liquor the Revels need to stay in business, in exchange for posing as his girl and helping him become mayor, she can't refuse. Fake dating. I love fake dating. <laughs> The moment Jameson Port sets foot in Charmont, he can't shake the feeling of familiarity. An orphan with as few memories as gemstones, he's desperate to learn what happened to his parents. But as he delves into the island's secrets, he risks angering the wrong person and discovering a truth that just might break his heart. When Lux and Jameson accidentally meet, the sparks that fly are more than her magical enchantments. But keeping secrets from powerful people is a dangerous game, one that could destroy them both. That sounds really good, but also, like, interesting because it's doing the fake dating trope, but normally, like, you end up with the fake dating, so it doesn't seem like she ends up with the fake dating guy. That's different. That is actually different, so that sounds kind of fun. Yeah, I think this book sounds really good, so I'm really excited to try it out, but still don't love the artwork. I really wish that they had, like, kind of left alone the original artwork because it, it looked really, really pretty. I remember what it looks like, and I should have it in one of these, like, letter things. So here's the owl babble. You know what? Looking at it from afar, it's really pretty, but I don't love it up close either. I feel like I just wish they'd done something different with the cover in general. The more I look at this one, the more it's, it's growing on me. I feel like by the end of this video, I'm going to like the cover. <laughs> Or at least by the time I read it, I'll like the cover. Those are the differences. That's what we have. That's what the original looks like. They definitely, like, went all out. So this looks like a standalone, which is cool. And because her next project is going to be a young adult romantic fantasy set in the 1880s. New York City describes it as a young adult Bridgerton with magic and murder. So if this one's good, then I'll probably be picking up that one because that sounds up my alley. So let's talk about spoilers. I did make some guesses, so keep yourself cozy with this Atlas 6 inspired third blanket. 
one point. Designed by Forensic and Flowers, Faux Book Journal is the first in one of our 2023 collections. Featuring in-universe references, each journal will be sure to transport you to a different literary universe. This month's journal pays homage to the mysterious and magical world found in the Starless Sea, two points, by Lichen and Limestone. As lovers of literature, readers often find magic in the most mundane of places. Magical Quotes for this Magnetic Bookmark set was designed by Tim Bereen. Designed by Say Sayer and inspired by A Darker Shade of Magic, this letter opener references Kel's penchant for finding mystery. So technically I got that, even though it said it on the items, but I'm counting it. <laughs> and then no one designs... Uh, did the Crescent City treasure tomes enamel pin, which are so cool. They're so cool. And I can't say I got that right because it was blatantly on there before I looked at it. <laughs> February's book is a must read for fans of Caravel and the Night Circus. And it says Prohibition era. So even though it had like 70s funkadelic vibes on the book, it says it's 20s era. So that's, I love books set in the 20s era. So I'm cool with that. Mind Edition features a gorgeous exclusive cover with art created by Nerix and designed by Lichen and Limestone. Find artwork illustrated by Diana Ad Warak on the reversible dust jacket. Hardcover case features exclusive foil stamps created by Teresa Chen or the Divine Literary. Flip open the book and you'll be met with a dreamy scene created by Golden Rose Art on the exclusive end pages. For our subscribers, author Lissa Mia Smith has written an author letter that has been bound into the book. Yeah, so I think this was a really good book box, actually. I think it was a lot of fun. It had a lot of really useful things and, of course, pins. I love pins. So probably my favorite item is going to be the blanket. It's always the blanket. The blanket is just an unfair advantage because it's blankets. I love blankets. <laughs> But probably second would be the letter opener. I know it's kind of weird, but I really like the letter opener. <laughs> and then least favorite, I feel like, would be the bookmarks. I don't have anything I didn't like. So least favorite out of everything that I've liked would be the bookmarks because I don't use mag magnetic bookmarks as much as other bookmarks. But I really, really like these. I like the quotes on them. They're very pretty. So I probably still will use them. So. And that is the unboxing. That is all the things that are happening in this video. <laughs> and make sure you subscribe for more unboxings and more content. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you comment down below what you thought about the stuff that was in the box and what you want to see from Alcrate in the future. And yeah, that's all I got for you guys. So I will see you guys in the next video.